Uh, it's a great opportunity to be talking to Marsa uh, from Kenya. Marsa is, uh, let's say, represents the young people in Kenya. And now uh, let's look at how um, she is running her businesses and how the business life uh, for a woman in Kenya uh, bans out. Uh, Martha, could you please introduce yourself and what you do for business? Okay, my name is Martha. I come from Kenya and I'm a businesswoman. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm in hotel industry. And uh, I also love reading. Not very much, but I love reading and leading extracts and everything. I also love poem and I also uh, love listening to good things, but I'm a businesswoman. I'm in restaurant hotel industry. So uh, what is your, yes. yeah, go ahead, Martha. Would you like to add something else? Yes, um, I'm, I'm, I'm actually in hotel industry. And as I said, it's a family business. It's a business that I enjoy doing, but sometimes I feel like this kind of business, and I believe a lot of people are there. This is a business that I'm doing and yes, I'm getting income from this business. It has moved me from one place to another. But I just feel like this is not a business that I'm passionate about, you know. It's not something that I'm passionate about doing it. It's just like I'm enclosed in that business because it's a family business and it's offering us good opportunity in life, like good opportunity in life. Like you can drive a good car kind of, you can stay in a good house. But I just feel like it's not taking me to the step that I want to be. I want to be in a business that I'm enjoying at the same time. So I was a little bit torn because I don't know whether I should go where I am now. And also the, because it's a family business and where the business is, where the business is, it's not moving in a place that I want to grow. I don't want to become a billionaire, you know. But yeah. with this business, I'm quite very sure that it's, it's stagnated to where I am. Maybe a millionaire, maybe in Kenyan shillings, <laughs> not in US dollars. So um, I'm like, uh, I'm torn there, but I want to grow. So I'm totally torn between that. And then there's a passion. I love doing makeup. Makeup is something that I love doing it so much. Like when I do makeup, when I do makeup to people, I feel good. And this is, I feel like it's a passion. But in the market, if I decide to stop doing this business that I'm doing and I venture into makeup, it will be very slow for me to grow financially. And I'm torn. So I'm torn between this family business that the income is not bad and the passion that I know is going to stagnate before it makes me reach somewhere. So, yeah. so I get a lot of confusion between mm -hmm. that, what to run for, what, where to stay, where to be. Yes, that, that's basically where I'm torn to. That's yeah. where I'm torn at, between the two. Let's get to your family business, Martha, okay? Sorry to interrupt. Can we go step by step? Pardon? Yeah, yeah. Pardon? My, my first question is, why do you feel that your family business is not the place for you? Yeah, yes. I, I feel so. I strongly feel so because when in a family business, you are not entitled to make the choice that you want to make alone. Like you have to incorporate everybody and not everybody will accept the challenge you're going to offer. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. Go ahead. I was, I was, just, I was just checking my internet. Yeah. Uh, that, 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 you know, when you're in, in a family business, you are, you cannot, you cannot spread your wings because you're all entitled to a group of people. And that's where my family business is coming into because I'm not entitled to make a drastic and major decision on my own. And I want someone I can spread my wings. So if this hotel industry, I, and sometimes I, I normally feel like if this hotel industry was my business, maybe I could enjoy it more because I'll be able to make the decision by my own, make my own mistakes. And I want to be in a field where I can be able to do such things by my own, by myself. And I feel like hotel business is not my thing. So I my just feel like... I'm not even enjoying it. It's giving me good money, but I'm not enjoying it. So my feeling is that 
do you want to make good decisions, important decisions? I don't. Yeah, I mean, do you want a job? Do you want a career where you can take good and the important decisions? Yes, yes, yes. Where I can make my decisions my own, make my own mistakes, and I acknowledge to that mistake and I move on. Like I'm, I'm like free to for mistakes and good things, and I also enjoy it. In the in this dream business, do you want to take risks? Pardon, you're breaking a little bit. Do, 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 want... you, do you want to take risks to be adventurous? Yes, definitely, definitely, most definitely. That's what I want because uh, I want to be adventurous. I, I, I want to, because actually the kind of business that is my passion, I'm, that which is makeup, I get called all over. I get because I'm a perfectionist. And that's why I related that, that, that makeup business is something that I want to do because you know, I, I knew that that was my passion because it's something that I wanted to do for a very long time. I wanted to look good. One, the reason why, there's somewhere where uh, uh, the question was, why did I choose to do makeup? And uh, the reason why I, I say it's because I was very obese. I was morbidly obese. And uh, because I was very big, I wanted to look good in my big, very big. I'm not big. I've lost like 70 kilos through surgery. So I did gastric bypass. And uh, I wanted to look good, you know. So I used to cover my bigness in my beauty of makeup and everything. So I started doing it perfectly. Then I decided, okay, let me go for my surgery to, because of health and everything. I wanted to look good. So I went for a weight loss surgery. And now I'm, I'm, I'm still on the way of recovering. It's three years down the line. I'm still not yet there, but I'm, I'm feeling much better. And because of that, I still do makeup. So I used to post those things on social media and I get a lot of calls. Okay, I started doing, okay, fine, let me go and do it. So I would get calls, I'd go and do people makeup and they would appreciate it and I'd get paid. And I was feeling so good. As much as it was not as much money as what my business is, I'm generating from that business. But there's that feeling of feeling good when I'm seeing somebody looking beautiful in a wedding. I'm like enjoying it. But if I look at the pay again, I'm like, no, this is not going to take me. So I'm, I'm, I'm torn between uh, those two scenarios. Okay, in, in your dreams or in, in your dream career, what kind of consumers, what kind of customers are you targeting? To be very, very sincere, um, targeting my passion for me to get money i'm targeting high-end customers because again for makeup somebody who is cannot afford a makeup because that's for instance a makeup i'm charging like uh 15 dollars if you can understand in in dollars i don't know a lot of people cannot even afford that you know especially in my setup but people have started appreciating it so you can imagine what I'm, I'm looking for. It's a quite a, a high end. My passion requires people who have money. And in, in, in my country, we are still a developing country. Not a lot of people have that. That's why I'm saying that the pace of getting that money is a bit slow. But again, this is something that I love doing. And again, I'm torn between wanting to pursue my dream, wanting to make it in life. That's where I'm torn. I'm totally toned in that. My question is, can you hear me? Yeah. Are yes, you 100 percent? Are you 100 percent sure that makeup is the business that you want to do for life? No, I'm not 100 percent sure. So my and I'm, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, that's why I'm torn between passion and dream, and that's where I want help from. That's why I want the help. I'm torn between passion and dream. Should I go with a dream job? Should I go with the passion? Because to be sincere, the hotel industry, it's a family business, but it's kind of something that I dream going big and having a five-star hotel and everything. So it can be a dream job for me, but it's not my passion. But am I happy in that? No, I'm not. So my, my other question is, if you become famous, oh. would that come close to your dream? 
Yes. I think so. I, I, I like that. <laughs> yes. I, I, I would. Uh, it, it will. Definitely. Now, now that you've talked about that, it will. I think it's like I love, I love being famous because as I've told you on social media and because I became very much uh, common on social media, I remember there's a time I'd go, I, I, I travel a lot outside, I go to China and everywhere and on the airport I'd get people stopping me. Oh, Masa, 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 I know you from a dose of him and I'm like, oh, thank you, thank you. So there's, there's that sense of maybe there's that sense of celebrity thing that is exciting me. I don't know, maybe. But now that you've asked, I think so. So my other question is, if you become famous, hmm. do you think you should be a makeup artist? Yes. Yes, I think I should be a makeup artist and a teacher of makeup. Because much like that, I, I, I noted that I love explaining much about makeup more than even doing it. I enjoy explaining things to people and making them understand. People ask me, what can I use for my skin? And I'm like, okay, I'll tell you. What, what can I do to look good? Like, yes, I can, I can show you. Let me do something on your face and then I'll explain a lot. So maybe going that way, I can enjoy it. So my other yeah. question is, how far can you go as a famous makeup, makeup artist? How far can I go? Um, what do you mean by how far can I go? Uh, financially or celebrity-wise or what do you mean? Yeah, yeah, my question is like financially uh, famous uh, and especially my question targets the, the area of affecting other people, sending a message, you know, changing other people's life, touching others. Yeah. Uh... I think I can go far, and I think the platform, the platform I have, have actually helped a lot of people. And in my makeup, in my makeup artist world, actually 60% I do it for free. People they tell me, oh, I'm like doing it because it's something, and that's why I say that it's a passion. You know, when you when you when you when you're passionate about something. Sometimes even don't do it for money. But again, I'm torn because I, I need money. I need to grow. I need to become a billionaire. I'm not, it's not a charity thing. So that's where I'm getting all confused in my life because it's like I'm so much in helping and talking, forgetting that I need money. And at the same time, when I sleep at night, I want to become this big person, a billionaire who I can do charities and help people and look for money and everything. And I'm at that age that I, I really want growth, but I'm confused between growth and passion and dream and what should I do? Yeah. Why don't you take makeup to the next level? My question means why don't you start a company for makeup, a factory for mm -hmm. makeup, your own brand? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Would you be able to do that? I will be, yeah, by the way. Another can make me a millionaire. <laughs> that can make me a millionaire. Yeah, that, that, that's a very good idea, but. Um, why do you say but? Why? What do I say but? Yeah. I'm saying but because. Excuse me uh, for interrupting, but my idea no, is no, that, okay. yeah, you shouldn't say but. You should say yeah, what I'm, I should do to get to this step. I'm trying to look at my Kenyan market. I'm trying to look at the level of growth in my country. Again, I'm having this problem because I'm in Kenya, but I'm not in the capital city. I'm in the outskirts of Kenya. You understand? And I'm trying to gauge between the Kenyan wait, Martha, market. Wait, Martha, please. Wait, Martha, please. Wait. Okay, yeah, yeah, but I, I'm saying wait. You are always like going in the butt way, in the obstacles way, but why not go into the opportunities way? Opportunities, yeah. You, are, you can yeah. speak Sawahli, you can speak English, you can speak to uh, many countries in South Africa. You, you are black, there are a lot of black women around you. 
there is a whole continent with the with this skin color. Um, mm -hmm. My other idea is that uh, you had a problem with body weight. Now you are mm -hmm. um, improving on this problem and you are making it yeah. into somehow a success story. So why mm -hmm. don't you gather these ideas together and then get something out of all of this to Africa? Yeah, um, yeah, it's true, but I guess it's because I'm not much exposed to the platform. Uh, I, I don't know how to do it, you understand? Maybe I'm, I'm on social media, I don't know how to, to look for these avenues because it's something that I've been wanting to do for a very long time. And you're actually touching something that is very dear to me. And uh, it's only that maybe I don't have the, the right platforms to step on that and do it. Uh, maybe I don't, I don't know whether I should go. Wait, Martha, wait, this. Martha, wait, wait, wait. You always say I don't have, you have the platforms. There are many, many platforms you can speak from. Mm -hmm. If you want to count them, there are many. Like mm -hmm. this is one of them. And then the other websites, there are too many to get fans, to get people who would know you, those people who meet you at the airport. Uh, you know, they are from different places. Uh, like the world is open. It's, it depends on you taking the steps. Why are you waiting for the chance to come to your feet? It will never come. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for that. You know, I'm understanding you so well, and uh, maybe uh, you said I should not use the word maybe or but, but I'm just trying to say that. Uh, yeah, it's open, but to be sincere, me, I don't know where to start. Okay, but I, I, you can say that there are a lot of platforms like this one. Like I've said that uh, I was once on a on a on a group of searching ladies makeup, and I would get ten of thousands of comments and feedback. And maybe I assumed maybe that was too less. Maybe my expectation was way beyond. But as I said, no. My problem is that if I concentrate so much on this one, I'm afraid that this is not going to give me income fast than what I'm getting now. If I was a little bit idle, I would embrace that. But the business I am in that is a family business, it's giving me good money, but not as good as I dream to have. So I'm afraid to go and venture into another business that is my passion, and then it doesn't accommodate the finances that I'm getting now. So I think that's where the problem. So sometimes when I concentrate so much on this end and I neglect this end, I feel like this other end is going to collapse and then I'll, I'll regret. So oh, I think wait. that's where- I need, Yeah, I want to ask a question here, okay? Wait. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So my question is, suppose we came to the end of the journey. You understand me? Yes, please. And you know, you no know more have the chance to take chances. Would you be happy with your life and your business at the hotel? Or would you have liked to change your life and take the opportunity to build your own image, even if you will have to go through challenges? Which way would you like to end your journey with? I think my passion. So then I think now the decision is clear. What you need is good planning, courage, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. start. Uh, you said good planning, courage, and? And the start, take action. And, and take action and start. So I'd rather regret in my passion than regret in my dreams. That's what you're saying. Yeah, my, my saying is we live only once. If you don't take yeah, yeah, yeah. the opportunity and then you come to the end and you haven't achieved anything from what you have come to this world for, mm -hmm. uh, then would you be happy with that? That's the question. No. Would you have liked to achieve to have achieved something else, then you should start working on that something else right now. Yeah, yeah, that's very true.
That's yeah, my, my other my other point here, Masa, like you tick a lot of boxes with a lot of women in Africa. Like, why don't yeah. you collect these these boxes, these ideas, or these places that you can affect other women, and then build the persona that you want as your customers? You know, and then you can start your product or your your self brand, self image, to target to address these women. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's very point? true. Yes, I'm getting your point, and I, it's it's actually a testament of what I'm trying to do. Though I'm doing it in denial, I started building a a a, a Mata Studio boutique. It's actually seventy percent underway, but I was in constant fear. It's it's almost where my my place of work is, and I've I've really spent quite some amount of money on it. So like I stop it and I'm like looking at it. Am I making mistake? Will I get this refund of money? So I'm, I'm I'm so thankful because it's something that I want to do and it's something that I've already started. So when I get such kind of advice from you, it's like you are the doubts that I'm having. You're relieving it, you know, like telling me that there's one thing that I've understand that I, I would rather be happy, regret later doing my passion than my dream because even in this in this hotel industry it can even collapse what if it collapse how will i be maybe i'm going to run to depression because it's not something that i had planned so uh yeah uh, i feel like you you you've you've started something in me you know my other question is why do you want success without effort <laughs> Why do I want? I guess it's because I got success without effort from the first place, kind of, in my family business, because my mom started it and we came when it was a little bit flourishing. And we came from a very humble beginning where we struggled a lot. And this business is the one that has kept us where we are now. So it's like we are giving back to that business that has really brought us where we are. But it was my mom's dream, not my dream. So it's like I'm obliged to make sure that the business goes on. Like there's this thing in mind, and being the firstborn in our family, and the, the most sober one in our, we are a family of four, and being the most sober, the most uh, hardworking one in our family, the most decent in our family, my mom looks upon me. So everything is putting burden on me. Mother, we are looking on you. Mother, we are relying on you. Mother, our family shoulders it. So I'm like, I'm the one carrying all my family burden. So sometimes letting it go, it's like I'm betraying my family. And I think that's where the problem is coming for me because I like feeling for my mom. Oh, my mom, because I don't have a family member who can do what I'm doing as much as it is a family business. You understand? Yeah. So maybe that's the reason why I'm a bit a turn between these two things because as much as it's a family business, I'm the one who is a... Wait, 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 I have a question here. Wait, Marta, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, so I, I think there it's your chance. That's your golden opportunity to prove that a woman from Kenya mm -hmm. who mm -hmm. has the burden of her family and she mm -hmm. managed to balance the responsibility of her family business with the responsibility of achieving her own dreams and getting out of her comfort zone. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's possible. Eh? I, 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 I don't want to regret later because, um, yeah, but I understand. I understand. So, and I've really worked hard for that. To be very sincere, as much as it's a family business, I came to this family business when it was 30% successful and my coming and my, my, my adding to value to that business, we've grown from maybe 30% to 70% through my going back to school at all age, making sure that because I, I went, because I wanted to learn more about business, I went and did a degree in Bachelor of Commerce procurement option, and I did a bit of financial management. So I wanted to do that so that I can do the right thing to follow the right rules in government regulations, making sure that the suppliers and everything are catered for. And because of that, I made sure that my family business has really grown. And uh, so I guess, but I did that because it's something that I 
found my mom has already started and I made it grow much better. And it's not my passion. As much as it has grown, it's not my passion. And I, I guess that's where I, I was really getting confused because I'm in this time of age and time that I want to grow both. I want to enjoy what I'm doing and I want to earn money at the same time. Because now if I enjoy and I don't have money, again, I'll have no meaning in this life. At the end of the day, we need to eat. We need basic need. We need all those kind of things. And I was getting turned. And again, I don't, and I'm this person that I say that naturally I'm a person that I want things done good, well, and perfect. So if I decide to go to the makeup world, it definitely means that I'm a little bit going to forget about this one and concentrate on this one, and that's why I'm scared. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's very clear. So uh, if you are going to start your own business somewhere in the future, what are the requirements? What do you need? Definitely, there's, there's, apart from the capital, apart from the, 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 the monetary factor, I definitely need my, my mind, my energy, greater perfection. But do I think I can manage both two? That one I've not tried myself, and I don't want to become a failure. I don't want to say that I tried this one, and because of this, it did not go through. No. Mm -hmm. It's your decision to make. Nobody else can manage that for you. Yes, but again, uh, it, it, it's something that I'm willing to try and you've really, you've really given me some points that you cannot understand that those points have really sunk into my mind. Like it's a golden opportunity again that I can become, I can be able to tell. So it, it, it's on my work to know how I can balance between the two and make sure that I made through both of them. So there's something that I've learned from you to be sincere, and uh, you've talked about good planning, courage, and to start. And uh, I think that's that's very important in doing so. What else? And what? actually, yeah, I yeah. yeah, go ahead, Marcel. Go ahead, please. And the reason why I came to you, it's because uh, I'm an introvert person. I'm always in close, apart from being in my platform. So these are the kind of things I never knew that I would come and ask and I can get some question. I, I work within myself and try to look for question and answers and I try to do it myself. So actually even coming and talking to you and you're telling me all these things, it's like, it's like a lesson and I'm, I'm, I'm really thankful. So my other question is, do you think that life has been unfair to you? Thinking what? Do you think that life, life has been unfair? to you? Do I think whether the life has been unfair to me? Mm -hmm. No, I, 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 that's not in my mind. No. I, 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 comparing to what I've seen people go through in my country, I can say that I'm a, I'm, I'm a strong, thick woman that I, I forget easily about the past and the bad things and what the life has for me and I concentrate on the present. And what I have now, I'm really thankful to God because at least I can be able to achieve some of those. So about life being unfair, no. It could have been unfair if I was very obese and I didn't have energy, or I didn't work hard to go and take care of my body. But if I had that opportunity, it means life was not unfair to me. It wasn't unfair to me because I can make some decision and I make sure that those decisions are acted on. Do you think that life is unfair to some other people more than you? The prices? Again? Do you Do think, think what? Th that life is unfair to other people more than you? The price. Do you think that life, life? Oh, that life. Yes. Yes. Yes, a, a lot. A, a, a lot, like a lot. It's very unfair to other people. But the problem I'm having with other people, and that's what I normally talk about, is that the people who their life has become unfair to them, majority of them, they have allowed that mentality of poverty to sink in them. Like you are there, you're, you're, you're having, I normally call it a, a poverty mentality. 
because if you have a poverty mentality, you cannot even go out and try to work hard. So I try to tell them, yes, life is hard. Yes, life is hard in Kenya. But have you gone out and tried and tried and tried so that you can at least say it is fair? Don't try once, don't try twice, don't try thrice, but keep on trying before you say that life is unfair to you. So I understand that a lot of people in my country and other countries, yes, people might mistake me by saying this, but I normally tell people they should have a mentality that is a richness mentality. I know all I read about, um, I'm sorry, maybe I'm getting out of the context here, but I read about the slavery in the US, how these black people, they were slaves. And you find people when they are called maybe, hey, Negro, somebody becomes mad because somebody called him black. Or when somebody talks shit, say, you're talking to me like this because I'm black, because I'm black. They've had that slave mentality in their head. They don't want to come out of that cocoon. They want to concentrate on that mentality rather than going out, exploring their life. Whoever calls you black, whoever calls you Negro, that is up to them. I was very big. And I was, I was very big and I'm short, I'm 5'4". And I remember people would stare at me and they would point hand at me, hey, look at that. I used not to get mad because I used to understand them. Maybe they've never seen somebody as big as me. So why don't you let them be who they are? And then I work hard on myself, okay? So I, I normally tell people that there's this slave mentality that is hindering you from moving forward. No, I cannot be like you. I cannot be an Arab like you. I'm black. That's how I found myself. So why should I become bitter because you've called me black and I'm black? Why should I become bitter? Because no, you call me black. Okay, that's good for you. Yes, I'm black, but life is going on. Can you be my friend? And so when, when people talk about has life become unfair to me, I'm wonder, unfair to them. I'm wondering, is it unfair to them because they've allowed that mentality of poverty, that mentality of life being unfair to them, sink into their head. I was, I was, I was almost abused by my father. I had, I had a very bad and a very rough history growing up, but I never let that contribute not to my success. So maybe it's me, but that's how I normally see life. Yeah, fantastic. My other question is, uh, Martha, you are always mm -hmm. speaking about your local market in Kenya. Why don't you target uh, a global market or at least an African market? To be sincere, I was even talking to some of my family members and telling them that I was thinking to go to these uh, developing countries in Africa because Kenya is one of the fastest growing economy in sub-Saharan Africa. We are the leading one and in Africa at large, we're in the top, maybe top five or top 10. And uh, life, we are almost an average people and I was saying that I can get good market from from these developing countries and knowing what they really want. But again, they wouldn't want to do makeup. Can you go to Congo or Sierra Leone and talk about makeup? You cannot. And that's why I was saying that my field is a celebrity kind of field. And that's why I was torn. Because it's something that I love it's like saying that I want to, 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 to start selling diamond. You know, if I say that I want to start selling diamond, which definitely it means that I'm targeting different kinds of people. Maybe, maybe I come to Egypt, maybe I could go to USA, maybe I go to this country that Europe or some other country, but not in Africa. So my, 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 my style of my passion is, uh, is, is, is diamond in quotes. You cannot go and tell somebody who is still but I, I believe that people who, my, 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 my circle of customers is way less than I would imagine I would want to reach. Until now, you are speaking from a person who hasn't really experienced the market. You haven't started your business. You haven't talked to the people. You haven't started advertising what you would advertise. I will uh -huh. take it. Yeah, <laughs> I will take it like that for this time. Okay. Okay. My, okay. my other question is, what else would you like to say? What else would I want to say? Yeah. Concerning this uh, whole uh, 
Yeah. Uh, one thing I would want to say is that uh, through my brief talking with you, there's one thing that I've understood, and that is about I've realized that no, is it? Um, am I am I pronouncing your your name rightly? Yeah. No. No, yeah. <laughs> no, okay. Yeah. Uh, by the way, we have a lot of Egyptians in my my, my place, uh, and uh, they're they're doing business also, <laughs> and maybe they are targeting the market here. Uh, one thing I would want to say is that what I've noted from you is that you value fashion more than dream because in fashion you get to be happy, and you know when you are happy, even if you don't have much, it's enough more than anything. Like. It's good to value happiness more than anything. You can have money and not being happy. So uh, that is one thing. And uh, another thing, Nora, is that I'm promising you I'm going to pursue this passion and I'll keep you posted. Yeah, that's a great note to uh, end the video with. It has been great. It's really yeah. exhilarating and it's really insightful and eye-opening. And let's say what Kenya and North Africa can produce in the future. Yes, thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you so much.